Hi, my name is Afsi Mulvaney. I'm an application engineer here at Keysight. And with me here today is Dr. Joel Dunsmore, R&D Keysight Fellow. Hello. We're here to talk with you about the latest addition to the Keysight Network Analyzer family, the configurable PIX CBNAs. These analyzers come in 20 and 40 gigahertz models, and they're well designed for active device tests, such as amplifiers and mixers. This system has about 80% of the performance of the PNAX and capability at 60% of the price. And with the multi-port configuration, it's really suitable for manufacturing test environments. Let me show you the hardware and software setup I have here. This is the Pixie chassis. What I have here is the new configurable Pixie VNA 44 gigahertz two port module. I have a VXD I'm using as the source. I have this amplifier I'm using as a DUT. And this is a standard Pixie VNA. You can see it's only single slot versus the new one. And Joel's gonna be talking about the configurable test set. The software up here you see is our VNA software, same UI as what you're used to in your PNA ENA streamline here. And here, this is the software panel for the VXD, which we're using as a vector signal generator. Let's take a look at the block diagram. This is the 20 gigahertz block diagram, but today I'm doing the 40 gigahertz system. So on this block diagram, these configurable test set components are ones that we can use to create external high power test setups. Here we have a booster amplifier, a dual directional coupler, my device that I'm measuring, and then we have our external couplers and attenuators that we use to drop the power down. And we can go directly into the receivers. So here's the configuration that you can see with just a high power input and an attenuator at the output. So for my first demo, I'm gonna drive port one into the amplifier, port two comes out. We've got this attenuator we've removed with the calibration, so I'm accurately calibrated here and here. This is the picture of this amplifier module, and you can see it has about plus 27 dBm maximum output power. We're not gonna drive it that hard today. In this window, I've set up a full S-parameter measurement. It's fully calibrated, and we can see the output power and the S parameters. This amplifier has about 40 dB of gain. But I'm gonna show you some power characteristics. So let's change the sweep type to a power sweep. And now we can see that this trace is generating the output power trace. We see the amplifier saturating. And if I zoom, on, zoom in on this trace, and we'll auto scale it, that's the S21 versus drive power. And we can see the gain compression curve. An interesting thing about this amplifier is it has a little bit of expansion before it goes into compression. And that'll show us some interesting properties when we look at it under modulated drive. So let's do that now. We can change the block diagram to do modulated drive using the VXT as a modulation source. So the VXT can produce six gigahertz of modulation, but we want to be at higher frequencies. So internal to the module, we have an up converter that gets used to take the source. Normally in a CW measurement, the source comes directly out through this doubler. But for modulated measurements, we feed the source to this up converting mixer, comes through filters, attenuators, and uh, pulse uh, modulators to generate a modulated signal at the output. And that's what I'm gonna be doing just now. You see in this window, I have what we call our modulation distortion application. And what we're doing is quick creating a 16 qualm signal on the modulation distortion. And I'm gonna go ahead and trigger that right now. Here we see in the sweep, it's starting at low power and jumping up to high power. This is the gain, this is the output power, this is the input power. And notice how these regions, we call that the adjacent channel power region, changes as the drive power changes. And in this window, we can see all of the measurements at minus 30 to minus 10. At low power, we have terrific EVM, only 0.24%. At high power, we have about 6% EVM. And we can see the gain does creep up a little bit as we drive to higher power. In addition, we can show the adjacent channel power. This is the adjacent channel power at the output. Interestingly, we see the adjacent channel at the input, and it's quite good, more than 60 dBc. So clearly the amplifier is creating all of my distortion. So now let's look at noise figure measurements of this amplifier. As you can see, the connection is very simple. It's just the duct directly connected to the test boards with, well, the attenuator and path. 
Here's the noise vector setup. We have the same vector scalar cal that you're used to with all your other network analyzers. This is a scalar measurement. We have about 2 dB of noise figure here. There's low level of jitter. This is sweeping right now. So you can use this Pixie VNA also for noise figure measurements. So let's take a look, quick look at the hardware block diagram. Here you can see the LNAs in the path that are used for the noise figure measurement. I wanted to point out there's also filters in the receiver path. These can be beneficial in harmonic distortion measurements, for example, to tune out the fundamental from reaching the receiver. So today we showed you how to make various amplifier measurements. We did gain compression, noise figure, modulation distortion, all with one connection. There was no connection disconnection here. And this was all with a configurable, new configurable Pixie VNA. I also wanted to point out that you can add this to the existing Pixie VNAs to make an array of VNAs for multi-port applications. So if you're a manufacturing engineer who's used to using the PNA X but need to reduce your cost and reduce your size and go to multi-port, this may be exactly what you need for your manufacturing operation.